Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to worship with University Christian Church here in Austin, Texas. I'm Reverend Megan Pegler, the senior minister here, and I'm so glad to welcome you from wherever you are joining us today and whoever you are, you are welcome here. We'd love to know that you worshiped with us today, so if you take a moment to sign in on the link that's in the description of this video, you can also find it on our website, ucc-austin.org. We'd love for you to do that. You can also share prayer requests in that uh, sign-up form. Today, those of, uh, those of us who are leading worship are all vaccinated. You'll see us wearing masks when we are um, speaking, but that's about it. So we are keeping an eye on the COVID situation here in Austin. We'll have some news to report from the COVID task group probably sometime this week about what our plan is moving forward, but things are moving in the right direction. And so we are hoping to be back in person sometime sooner than later. Okay, so I'd like to take a moment to do a couple of welcomes. We've got a new choral scholar here, Lizzie Marlowe. She'll be singing for us today, and we are thrilled about that. And we also have with us today UCC's new organist, Jill Nenman. She's not playing in the worship service today, but she is here to observe uh, the worship service to help her prepare for her first Sunday behind the organ next week. And we are so glad that both Lizzie and Jill are here. And I'd like to also take a moment to thank Kathy Parsley, who has been our interim organist and has done an outstanding job. We are so grateful for all of the ways that she shares her gifts with us and the world. Today we're worshiping, wrapping up our worship series, Let All Creation Praise. We've been spending, I think it's five weeks now, awakening to the wonders of creation. Today, the focus is on the animals. It's a blessing of the animal Sunday. So later on during the sermon, there will be a moment for you, if you have a pet at home, to go get that pet um, to be with you during that time of blessing. Today's also World Communion Sunday. So we give thanks for all of the ways that we are reminded that we are one family of God. There are, there are many ways to connect and to serve in the community coming up. We are less than a week away from the Williamson County Alzheimer's Walk. We have a UCC team that's been started up by Leslie Barnes. If you'd like to join that team, you can walk uh, at the official walk in Round Rock, or you can walk in your own neighbor, neighborhood if you feel more comfortable doing that. If you aren't up to walking, but you want to donate to the team, the link is in the weekly email, and if you need that link, I'll be happy to send it to you. On October 17th, it's a Sunday, from 2 to 4, we're going to have a park gathering at Walnut Creek Metropolitan Park. There's plenty of parking. We'll be at the picnic um, shade area, and so we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you there. It'll be kind of a come and go thing. There is a really cool new playground there, walking trails, the picnic tables. It'll be a good time of fun and fellowship, and UCC will provide some cold drinks. October 30, not October 31st, October 23rd, we have the IACT Raise the Roof Service Day. UCC has some people signed up to volunteer. We'll be working on painting a house in the community, and so if you'd like to be a part of that, there is a volunteer waiver form you need to fill out, so reach out to the office this week to get connected to that. And one last reminder, we have our Zoom fellowship hour today, right after worship. You should have that link in your Sunday email, if you don't get that email and need the link, please email us in the next few minutes and we will get that email to you, that link to you um, before the fellowship hour starts. So we look forward to serving and fellowshipping and connecting with you in whatever way that we can do that. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Today's call to worship comes from selections from Psalm 148, and you'll hear some variations on that psalm in today's litany of praise in a few moments. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, snowy, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds kings of the earth and all peoples, young and old together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Please join me in this joyful litany of praise. All dogs and cats, large and small, praise the Lord. All rabbits, hamsters, and guinea pigs, praise the Lord. All robins, wrens, and singing birds, praise the Lord. All bats, squirrels, and raccoons, praise the Lord. All horses, cows, and sheep, praise the Lord. All lizards, snakes, and creeping things, praise praise the Lord. Every animal in the sky, the sea, the desert, and the forest, praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of understanding, through the word read and proclaimed, and through your word incarnate, Jesus Christ, you give us the direction we need and show us 
that there is nowhere else to go but to you with our joys and our concerns. We pray for our world that too often follows the advice of wickedness that leads to war, to violence, to conflict, to fear. We pray for the women in the world who as payment for their devotion and love as capable wives, daughters, sisters, mothers, students, girlfriends, educators, physicians, pastors, when they receive rejection, abuse, heartbreak, and hate. We pray for all relationships that are broken by conflicts and dispute, by murder and by deceit, and that cannot find a way back to restoration and healing. God, we pray for our children who have been called the first in God's heart and kingdom, but who are not welcomed, loved, cared for, heard, or spoken to. We believe in you, God of justice and mercy, and we ask, trusting in your power to heal the wounded hearts, to restore the brokenness of the world, and to lead us to everlasting peace. God, we ask these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from Psalm chapter 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. 
you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the year 1229, a few years after the death of Francis of Assisi, one of Francis's biographers, Thomas of Chelano, shared the story of how Francis preached to the birds. One day, Francis came upon a whole lot of birds, lots of different types, and he ran toward them. Now, when you think about if you ran toward some birds, it would, you would expect that they would probably immediately fly away, right? Well, that didn't happen when Francis ran toward them. He greeted them. They stayed put. He greeted them. He said, the Lord give you peace. That's how he greeted every creature. And so since those birds didn't fly away and they stayed put, he asked them, he invited them to listen to the word of God. Thomas says that Francis said, my brother and sister birds, you should greatly praise your creator and love him always. He gave you feathers to wear and wings to fly and whatever you need. God made you noble among his creatures and gave you a home in the purity of the air, so that though you do not sow nor reap, he nevertheless protects and governs you without your least care. And the story goes that when they heard these words, the birds stretched out their necks, spread their wings, opened their beaks, and looked at Francis. He blessed them and gave them permission to fly away, and so then they did. Thomas writes, after the birds had listened so reverently to the word of God, Francis began to accuse himself of negligence because he had not preached to them before. From that day on, he carefully exhorted all birds, all animals, all reptiles, and also insensible creatures to praise and love their creator. Francis of Assisi was so devoted to God and to every creature, he called the celestial beings brother, soon, brother sun and sister moon. He called the creatures of the earth brother and sister, brother and sister birds. He sought in his life to live in right relationship with God and others. And so as a result of his example, many churches, Catholic and Protestant alike, do this blessing of the animals on or near his feast day, which is October 4th. And so today we wrap up our recognition of the season of creation with the blessing of the animals. When we talk about creation from a scriptural perspective, the word dominion comes up again and again. We heard it on Humanity Sunday in the Genesis 1 text, where the first man was told, have, you will have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. The Common English Bible translation, instead of saying you will have dominion, it says you will take charge. And so we see that again in Psalm 8, our passage from today, where God has given humans dominion over the works of God's hands. Again, a different perspective from the Common English Bible. God has let humans rule over God's handiwork. 
So there's this sense of responsibility and being in charge, ruling, having dominion, and all of that language for some has been somewhat of a permission slip to run roughshod over the earth and all other living things. We're in charge. We're here to rule. We can do what we want. We're going to do what's best for us, number one, no matter the consequences for the broader ecosystem. But that is such a misinterpretation. God has entrusted us to care for, to steward, and to honor our kinship with all living creatures. It's a privilege and a responsibility. It's not a permission slip to do whatever we want. One of our other readings for today comes from Genesis 2, verses 18 to 25. It's the second creation story where God creates animals and birds to offer companionship to Adam. God doesn't create these other creatures just for the use of the human. They aren't just resources or background filler to make the earth more interesting. These are potential companions. One of our best paths of insight into that companion aspect of animals is through our beloved pets. Steve and I have three cats and one dog, and it's a constant struggle to not adopt more animals. And our sweet dog I'm going to focus on today because she's 15 years old, this sweet girl Zoe. I got her when I was still a college student. She was three months old. She's been with me through so much of my life. She hasn't just been there. She's been there with me. We've traveled together from Fort Worth to Kansas City, back to Fort Worth to Austin. We've seen a lot of life together. Our pets are our companions. In Psalm 8, we read that God has made humans a little lower than God, a little less than divine, and that God has crowned us with glory and honor. God, in God's relationship with humanity, and with the rest of creation. God does not treat the earth or humans as a commodity to be used up. And so our relationship with other humans, with animals, with all the creatures of the earth should be patterned after that. It should echo that way of being amongst the rest of creation. Our relationship with the earth, with all of the creatures of the sky and the sea and the mountains and the desert and the forest, our relationship with other humans ought to be based in an ethic of care. Verses 6 through 8 of Psalm 8 says, You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. It's getting at our responsibility, our vocation as humans, that God has entrusted the care to us. All creatures, sheep, oxen, cows, blackbirds, robins and wrens, whales and salmon, hamsters, cats, dogs, God has put them under our feet, the psalmist says. Which might make you think of a trampling, but imagine the first people in the Garden of Eden. When they walked there, it was not a trampling. It wasn't a stomping about. 
It was a walking with, a walking alongside, a gentleness to it. We are called to care for creation. And that's not just about tending to or feeding or binding up wounds. It's about living in such a way that habitats are kept safe and healthy and habitable. Part of caring is noticing and naming the goodness in creation and creatures, naming it as blessing, recognizing it as such, and then extending blessing to every part of it. Another biographer of Francis wrote that he diligently noted the virtue of all creatures and whatever he was able to judge as admirable, delightful, or of value in any of them, he referred totally to the glory of the maker in all things. And then since he traced all things back to their one first beginning, he called every creature his sibling and continuously invited all creatures to praise their one common creator. When Jesus walked on the earth, We know that he also was not a destructive, dominating type of human. Instead, the dominion that Jesus exercised as a human and that we are called to pattern ourselves after is one that is marked by nurturing love. Marked by nurturing love rather than selfish exploitation, in the words of one commentary. As Christians, Christ followers, our whole approach to life and relationships, our way of being in the world, ought to be informed by Christ's way of love, grace, and redemption. Just as we care for other creatures, we are cared for by other creatures. I've taken care of Zoe a lot in her life, but she's taken care of me as well. And so let's get along in that business of sharing the love of God, that essential task of blessing. It's one of our primary tasks as humans to love and to bless as we have been blessed. So if you have animals in your household, now is the time to go round them up. If you don't have any animals in your household right now, you might pull up a picture of your favorite animal. It doesn't have to be a pet type of animal either. Uh, It could be a whale or, uh, I don't know, a uh, Komodo dragon. (laughs) There are so many options. Pull up a picture on your phone or maybe in your mind's eye. And even if you don't like animals all that much, you are a part of this blessing task too. So stick around. When we're back to normal non-pandemic times, we will have other blessing of the animals services where we gather in a park with our animal friends there physically with us. But today we will share in this virtual blessing. So please join with me in prayer. Loving God, bless these animals with us today and all living creatures in your good world. Grant them health and peace. May our animal companions continue to bear witness to your creativity, humor, loyalty, and deep love. May our relationships with them mirror your love, and may our care for them be an example of your bountiful mercy in the way of Christ. 
protect and comfort animals who are hurt or hungry, and make us instruments of your care. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now for the actual blessing. Repeat after me, if you would. And if you are with your pet at home, you can put your hand above them or on them. You can be petting them during this blessing. Bless you, beloved pets. You can say their name there if you'd like. Bless you, beloved pets. May you love your human and praise your creator every day of your life. And may God keep you from harm. Amen. joyous Sunday on which we celebrate all creation, rejoicing and praising the Creator for the breadth of diversity that fills our world. May we renew our commitment as the Church to spreading the good news, sharing the love of Christ, and caring for all. Let us commit our time, talents, and treasures to the work that we are called to do. I invite you to use the link on our website to give to reach out to our deacons of our ministries, to connect for ways in which you can volunteer your time, to consider joining our Alzheimer's Walk team next Sunday, and to consider joining us as we raise the roof with IAC later this month. May we give generously from which we are blessed abundantly. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially 
We thank you for the love of our families, the affection of our friends, strength and abilities to serve your purpose today, this community of which we are a part, and opportunities to give as we have received. Amen. Siblings, it is truly a joyful day in the life of the church and in the life of all people who serve God. Today, we are so happy to have celebrated the blessing of the animals and to have been reminded that all creatures, great and small, were created by one creator. Today is also World Communion Sunday. And friends, I never thought we would do two World Communion Sundays in a pandemic, but here we are. And in fact, it is my joyful task to remind y'all that according to the letters of Paul, the church, the ecclesia, is where two or more are gathered in the name of God. And so therefore, even if you are at home alone watching this live stream or a recording later, you are gathered with all of us who are here, and Christ is present with us. Indeed, Paul makes the point that it is the connection between the gatherings that creates the church. And on this day, we remember that we are all connected by this central table. Friends, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Please join me in prayer. Enlarge our vision of your church this morning, O God of us all. As we surround this table here to break bread and drink from this cup in remembrance of how Christ was given for us, let us catch a glimpse of other Christians in other places, surrounding other tables in person or virtually, breaking bread and drinking from similar cups in remembrance of how Christ was given for them as well. By your Spirit, link the hearts of all who this day draw near by faith to receive the emblems of Holy Communion with thanksgiving. Transcend national boundaries denominational barriers, cultural differences, and ethnic divides, so that as one people with one voice, we confess our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Lamb who offers salvation to all. Amen. Thank you.
benediction. God's beloved, may God grant you strength through the Spirit. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. And may you know, share, and rejoice in the immeasurable love of God. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen.